In my last three videos, I discussed the organization of Jehovah Witnesses. In the first video, which was part 68 of my History of Religion series, I discussed the history and structure of the organization. I discussed the founders Charles Taze Russell and then Judge Rutherford and the way that the Watchtower organization is organized. In the next video, which was part 69, I discussed the beliefs and doctrine of the organization. We went in depth about what the organization truly believes and using their own words from their website, we clearly see that the Jesus that the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in and promote is not the same Yahshua HaMashiach of the Bible. And then the third video clearly showed the connection of the Jehovah Witnesses and the coming New World Order. That video clearly explained what side of Bible prophecy this organization is on. So while there are still naysayers and deniers, though I honestly can't understand why with such overwhelming evidence, I also believe that many others will come to understand the deception of this organization. I pray that many that are associated with this group have gained enough understanding to see clearly what side of the battle they are in. I pray that many make the decision to make changes and remove themselves from this organization before time is up. I also hope that many others that are not witnesses but have faith in Yahshua now have more of an understanding of the Watchtower organization and their beliefs. And I pray that this understanding allows them to witness the Jehovah Witnesses better. This series of videos is in no way about an attack on individual Jehovah Witnesses personally, but only about exposing deception. I do not have anything against them individually, and I do not believe that they are inherently evil. I just believe there is deception, and this is what this channel is dedicated towards, spreading the gospel, providing encouragement, and exposing deception. So I want to end the topic surrounding Jehovah's Witnesses with advice on how to witness to them, as well as speak to any witness that our Father is bringing out from the deception. The whole goal of these videos is to witness to those who truly love our Creator and truly want to serve Him and be a steward of His true kingdom. So let's wrap it all up. Let's begin. Now, I want to speak with Jehovah Witnesses first. Anybody that is a part of their organization but feels our Father tugging at their heart. Please continue to pray about it and ask the Father for strength. I know it may be easy to just deny all the evidence shown and continue on with your view, but that is not the right thing to do. A big disagreement that many have is the existence of hell. Now, take the word hell out of the equation. In the second video, I gave about four or five scriptures that reference being tormented in a lake of fire. Many ignored those scriptures and wanted to focus on just the use of the word hell. Please understand this. If you are correct and there is no hell or everlasting torment, then you not believing in it, or vice versa, actually believing in it, brings no consequence. It wouldn't matter. But I ask that you take the flip side and ask yourself, what if you're wrong? What if there is an everlasting torment in a lake of fire? What if you misunderstood those scriptures and misunderstood the God that you believe you are serving? What is the risk for you then? It's a much bigger deal. Are you willing to make that bet based off of your own reasoning? Do you realize that your view is on the same side of Satanists, occultists, Freemasons, and atheists? They all believe that there is no hell as well. You should make sure you are a thousand percent sure of what you are denying to be true and completely understand the consequence if you're wrong. Now, if you have recognized the deception and now desire to repent from it and truly seek the Father, the first thing I don't want you to do is to dwell on your mistakes. It's common that as we wake up and realize the extent of our mistakes and how much we have been deceived, many different feelings can come upon us. Feelings of embarrassment, guilt, sadness, depression, resentment, failure, etc., etc. This is quite normal, but I want you to rebuke the devil and shake that off because that's the devil placing all that in your head and on your heart. It's not Yahweh. I want you to understand that we all have been deceived. You are not alone with this. We all have done wickedness in the eyes of Yahweh. Me, the creator of this video and this channel, before I was awakened, I was extremely of this world. I celebrated pagan holidays. I followed man instead of following the Holy Spirit. 
I was in complete rebellion to our father. And the worst part is that I believe that I truly was for him because I used to go to church as many Sundays as I could and I tithe regularly. When I saw how truly wicked I was, I was disgusted by myself. But I did not dwell on that. I used my mistakes as lessons that I could draw upon to help others. My point is that though you may feel a great deal of emotions for being deceived by the organization, the only feeling you should have now is joy. Joy that the Father has awakened you. The scales from your eyes have been removed before it was too late. I want you to have joy and rebuke all the other feelings in the name of Yahshua. That's first. Use this experience and your understanding to help bring others out as well. Now, here's the deal. I realize that because of your decision, you are going to go through some hardships. Leaving the organization is very difficult because it can mean that you lose everything that you've ever cared for. Your family, your friends will ostracize you, reject you, and disown you. You will not have them in your life if they are really strict in following the organization. You might have built a life completely surrounded upon the organization, and maybe you're scared of what life will be like if you denounce their teachings and focus on relationship with Yahshua through the leading of the Holy Spirit, leaning on his words more than religion and man. I know it can be scary. I want you to know that this is a normal thing, and it is not just something that Jehovah Witnesses have to deal with. Many of us that grew up in the other church denominations like Baptist, Seventh-day Adventist, Apostolic, etc., all have dealt with the rejection. I actually made a video about what to expect as a Christian, but I don't like that label of Christian too much because it often can be misconstrued. I like being a Kodeshim, which is a set-apart one, and I also like a follower of the way, which is what the early apostles were called. Either way, know that rejection is normal, and it is something that you will go through regardless. If your family wakes up the same time you have, you are blessed. I just want you to know that. But you should not expect it, and you should not make it a requirement or a determining factor for your decision to follow Yahweh in spirit and in truth. He wants us all to bear our own crosses. We all will face persecution in our own ways. Some will be physical. Some will be emotional, mental, or financial. Sacrifice is what is needed. But the good thing is that I don't have to dwell on that with you because that is what the organization taught you as well. You already know about giving up the world for him. But the only difference is you did it in a controlled way where everyone you were around did the same thing. Today, you may feel isolated and alone because us believers are scattered around the world. We are not organized like the other religious structures are today. Anyways, I want you to understand that Yahshua told us to expect this. I spoke about this in my other video, but let me expand on it. You have been taught that Yahshua is coming to bring peace on earth. But Yahshua said something completely different. And what you may experience when you truly follow him, he already foretold and told us that it would happen. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 10, verses 34, but keep reading to verse 39. He says, Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemy will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. He has already told us that this would happen. And you will not be any different. Following him truly will set you apart from many that are closest to you. He says your enemies will be those of your own household. He also said that if you love your mother or father or even your children more than him, you are not worthy of him. What does that mean? It means that if you are scared to follow him because you're scared of losing your relationship with your family, you are not worthy of him. You must take up your cross and follow him regardless of what struggles you may come across. And so while I understand that it's very difficult to remove yourself from the organization, it is a necessary thing. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for anyone else but yourself. 
You are not leaving the organization to become a Christian. You are leaving the organization to follow the way. The only way. The way, the truth, and the life. You are following Yahshua, the Messiah, away from man's organized rules and traditions. You are being led by the Holy Spirit and having a personal relationship with our Creator through His Son, Yahshua. Now, I lastly want to tell you, when leaving the organization, you do not need to write the organization a letter or formally break away. You do not need to formally sit down and explain your decision. You need to break clean away from the bondage. You should have a conversation with your families and friends, yes. If you're not able to explain your decision to them, then that means you really don't know what you're doing. And I'm not advocating that at all. What I'm saying to you is that you do not need to formally explain to your deceiver that you are no longer being deceived. For some reason, those that break away from the organization feel that they owe the organization an explanation. When you do this, this means the organization has some kind of hold on you. This is not like breaking up with a girlfriend or boyfriend. The only one that deserves an explanation is Yahweh, and you should be speaking with him continuously from this point on. Let him guide you on how you are to deal with the break. All that matters is him. Follow him. No one else but him and his lead. Now, after you get past all this, the next part is probably, where should you go from here? Let me straight up tell you that finding another church denomination and or organization is not the answer. You do not need to start looking for another organized church. You need to start studying and reading his word on a regular basis. You should be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. Understand your baptism with the organization was not based upon truths. Your confession to him was not true. It wasn't based on truth. So it would not provide you with the true gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I said you should not look for a church, that does not mean you should not look for fellowship. Pray to the Father that he provides you with others that you can fellowship with and that can provide you with encouragement. I'm not saying that he can't and won't lead you to a physical church. All I'm saying is that this is not what you need to set out in search of. What you need to set your search upon is him and growing and feeding upon his word so that it is a part of you and you are completely living through it. My channel is dedicated to spreading many truths and I encourage you to watch some of my videos if you are led to do so. But I am not the answer. I am just a vessel giving out a message. Please watch the History of Religion series from part one and hopefully many of your questions are answered. I hope that all of that advice gives you enough to work from and that you feel ready and empowered to start a new relationship with Yahshua through his word and away from the ways and traditions of men. Now, I want to talk with non-witnesses now. For those that are not witnesses, but no witnesses that you would like to speak to, or just want to be better prepared to deal with them if you come across them, let me give you some advice. The first thing is rule number one. Make sure that your heart is in the right place. Make sure you are seeking to speak with witnesses in order to help them and bring them to the Father. Make sure you are not talking to them to fulfill your flesh, to elevate yourself and bring judgment down upon them. Check your heart because if your intentions are wrong, you could be doing more wrong than good. I tell that to myself often. There are so many times when I'm walking past a witness doing their field work and I want to spark a conversation. I often have to check myself and examine, is this a feeling that the Father is placing on me or is my flesh provoking me? So this is the first rule. Check your heart and make sure your intentions are pure. Rule number two, make sure you know your own faith and have good reasons for your convictions and your belief. If you do not know what you are talking about, you can often validate them more than sparking thought for them. They already think you don't know anything and that you are foolish in your understanding. Please do not validate those thoughts. If you're going to witness to them, have a good understanding of your faith and where to find certain scriptures. And if you do not know certain things, there's a question that you're not able to answer, always be willing to say you are not sure and you will get back to them. Do not give an answer you are unsure of just so you can respond. 
you are dealing with people that have been trained to believe that all other believers in Yahshua are apostates, that we are all in error and don't really understand the Bible. You should not try to witness to them until you know that you won't confirm this stereotype. Now, I'm not saying that you need to know the Bible from cover to cover, but you should be confident enough in your faith that you have an understanding of what you believe and why, as you also understand the errors and why. Rule number three, understand there is no silver bullet. There is no one thing that you are going to be able to say that will make them change their faith. What works for someone may not work with someone else. So it's not about targeting one piece of false doctrine, but going over it completely as a whole. Maybe watch my videos with them and then have a conversation surrounding it. Or use thought provoking questions using their own beliefs. Like ask them, why do they believe that the United Nations is the organization that will do God's will on earth? Maybe they answer like, I don't believe that. Then you can say, well, do you know your organization does? Or if they give a reason why, just listen to them and be ready to respond with facts. You must be an active listener. Remember that Jehovah's Witnesses are real people too. Showing them respect will go a long way. You do not need to agree with someone to show them respect. Rule number four. You should know that many of them do have doubts. Now, they may not verbalize them to you or to anyone else for that matter, but a lot of them have doubts, especially the ones that were just born into it and just follow their parents. Many of them have asked the elders questions and have gotten shut down and shunned. You need to be their fresh air. Be a resource and fill the void that the elders left open. Rule number five, you should ask questions. When speaking with them, you should not try to just start teaching them. You will not get them to open up this way. The best way to get them to open up is to engage with them by asking them questions. If you watch the other three parts, you should have enough information that you can engage them through questioning. But this is not drilling them like they are on trial, but asking them questions that will encourage them to think for themselves. They must think for themselves. Like ask them, what does Bible prophecy say about the last days? Ask them, why do they feel that Jesus is the Archangel Michael? Or do they have a personal relationship with Yahshua themselves? Thought-provoking questions. Don't be an accuser, though. Don't start dialogue in a challenging manner. You will lose them. Rule number six. You should not assume that Jehovah's Witnesses know their Bible. Now, they probably know their key points that they are trained to say to you from their field training, but you shouldn't assume that they know more past that. They know enough to challenge the everyday believer that really doesn't know the Bible themselves. I know many people can be scared to speak to witnesses because they believe that the witnesses may know more about the Bible than them. You should not assume this, but be ready to have a discussion around their main points. Don't discuss hard topics like the Trinity with them in the beginning. And if you are witnessing to them, you should already be awakened around the celebration of the pagan holidays. If you still celebrate Christmas or Easter, you should not be witnessing to witnesses. You are driving them further in their faith than away from it. But if you can explain that you don't follow those things as well, you possibly can gain their ear and attention. Rule number seven, don't try to force them to say that they're wrong. In your conversation, you may not feel like you're really reaching them and that they did not really hear you out. But if you were able to have a conversation with them about your views and you were able to ask them questions that forced them to think for themselves, you have reached them. They just probably won't admit it. Don't try to corner them into making a decision at that moment. Like I said, they almost never will admit that they are wrong in front of you. Rule number eight, don't just turn them away. When witnesses are doing field work, it's often that they are working in pairs. There is one that is a more seasoned witness that has been engaging with people for a while. And the second person is often a newer member that is now just learning. The newer member often does not know a lot, and you may be able to spark some questions and thought into them. But either way, don't turn them away just because it's easy to do. 
witnesses do a lot of training going over rebuttals and how to deal with certain rejections. They know enough of their doctrine to get past those things. They have a lot of rehearsed speech, very much like a telemarketer rehearses their own sales pitch. Once you get past that, if you know your Bible in context, you are already way ahead of them. Use that opportunity to witness to them. Remember, if they are knocking on your door, especially now, it's probably because the Father sent them to you. Fulfill your ministry. I've placed these rules on my website so you can go back and review this later. We are in the final days before the coming world change. Jehovah's Witnesses are not our enemy. Satan is our enemy. His deception, his doctrines, his schemes are our enemy. Our job is to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth and bring as many lost souls as we can to redemption. Whether you are a Jehovah's Witness that has come into the truth or you are a non-witness that is trying to bring someone else into the truth, there will be a battle and right now it is not physical. The stronger you are in your faith, the stronger you will be in defeating the devil and loosening spiritual strongholds that are placed upon others. This is ministry and it's something that as followers of Yahshua is something that we all are responsible to do and fulfill. I hope this has blessed you and I pray that this part in the series of History of Religion is breaking demonic strongholds and weakening the power of the enemy. I pray whoever you are that is watching this, that your faith is being built up and that you're preparing yourself for the kingdom of Elohim because our redemption is at hand. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like and share this. If you have not already done so, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I would like to thank all those who donate to this ministry. Your love and support are an extreme blessing and truly helps me focus on what really matters. Thanks for listening to Yahweh's call on your heart. Okay, thanks everyone for watching. I love you all.